Okay. Let's see. Yeah, come on in. Oh, Felicia. Come on in. Let me grab your coat. Look, I'm sorry for <laughs> calling you out in this rain. All right. But I needed to talk to you. I got your message late last night. You said that it was important. Yeah, it is. I got all these uh, telexes from Sean Donnelly's office. Sean's office? Who are they from? From the hospital ship. Seems there's a crisis on board. There's a big problem. Well, with everything going on, I've forgotten about it. Yeah, so did I. Since Sean's on the run, there's nobody filling orders, and they can't. They can't get the supplies. They don't know what to do. Is that why you asked me here? Yeah, well, I figured since you work for him, you could uh, sit in on a meeting I'm having this morning and answer some questions, if you don't mind. Sure, I'll do whatever I can. Great, thank you. Good morning, What's all this about an urgent meeting? Yeah, I hope it's not going to take too long. We have to get to the hospital and make rounds. What a mess. I knew this was going to happen. Didn't I tell you? I told Grant I couldn't handle this thing alone. And I told you I was out of the operation. Then what are you doing here this morning? My share of the profits are supposed to go to the hospital clinic. What profits? There aren't going to be any profits if the ship doesn't have anything to sell? In the past, whenever a request came in, Sean had all the supplies sent to the nearest port for the ship to pick it up. And you were supposed to keep track of all the invoices? That's right. I was the coordinator between the hospital supply company and Sean's office. Did you stay on top of everything? Well, no. When Sean was arrested, I didn't have a job anymore. Well, then if you were so concerned about it, why didn't you stay on top of everything? Come on, Grant. You know I've been trying. You know the kind of schedule I'm keeping at the hospital. Alan, do you have any idea how to resupply the medical ship? No, I don't know that. I thought that Sean left somebody in charge, didn't you? No, I had never thought about it one way or the other. Wait a second, didn't Sean have anybody working for him who wasn't involved in the heist to the treasure other than Felicia? Obviously not. The telexes were sent over by his receptionist. She didn't know what to do with them. The question is, what are we going to do with them? Well, I called Brett Madison. He's going to come over. If Sean's attorney, maybe he has an idea. I sure hope so. I mean, I know that Sean was a crook, but I thought he was a better businessman than this, didn't you? You know, Brett Madison called me yesterday, and I was supposed to call him back today. Well, he probably wanted to ask you the same question that I asked you. Jimmy Lee, what is the worst that could happen? Well, we could close down the ship. Take it as a tax loss. Oh. And what about those third world countries? That was supposed to be the whole purpose behind this venture. We were supplying them with medical supplies. Not to mention the money for all of us. What is with you, Alan? Is that all you can think you know, about? You know, the money? interesting thing here is that Sean Donnelly, this was only one of his enterprises. If this business goes down, the whole business goes down. With all this, whose empire could go under? Wonderful. <laughs> Maybe I could pick up a few of the pieces for myself. Huh? Good morning, Edward. I've called a meeting this morning about Sean Donnelly, specifically about the medical ship. What time is Madison supposed to get here? I've got to get back to the hospital. Don't be a fool, Alan. Nothing would please me more than to pick up for 10 cents on the dollar what Jimmy Lee sold to Sean Donnelly. If we can get in on this for pennies, we can salvage the hospital ship and still make... My only interest is in the hospital ship. I am not interested in any of your devious financial schemes. Alan, if you pass up a business opportunity like this, you are not my son. Will you please stop making trouble for me? Grant, I'm going back to the hospital. Are you coming? Yeah, I am. I can't wait any longer for Madison to show up. Felicia, you can stay, can't you? Yeah, I think I'd better these invoices are a mess. Good. Ah, oh, good morning. I'm sorry if I'm late. Oh, you're not late. We were just on our way out. Well, I apologize, but this rain has traffic backed up for 20 blocks. Felicia, I didn't expect to see you here. She merely asked me to come. Yeah, yeah, this is about Sean's company, specifically the medical ship. Uh, in that case, Alan, you and Dr. Andrews had better stick around. If it doesn't take too long. Well, I'm uh, just here as an interested bystander, in case you need my advice. Fine, Mr. Quartermain. Now, Jimmy Lee, I understand you have a problem. Yeah, the problem is, since Sean is on the run from the cops, so as men, there's nobody taking care of the business. Which includes the hospital ship, and somebody's got to make the decision, so I'm volunteering, because I am a third partner and Grant's not interested. No, I'm not interested, except to see that 
purpose of the ship fulfilled and to donate my share of the profits to the hospital clinic. Well, you're his attorney. What do we do in a situation like this? Well, it seems to me you have to give power of attorney to one of the partners, either Alan or Grant. I'm afraid that's impossible, gentlemen. What? What do you mean, impossible? Yeah, what do you mean, impossible? Well, Alan and Grant are both limited partners, and you're even further removed from the position of power, Jimmy Lee. Sean, as the general partner, is the only one who has the authority to designate power of attorney. Well, that's impossible. The man's a fugitive. Aside from the fact that we have a small investment in this ship, I mean, really, we can go to court if necessary. That won't be necessary, Alan. Obviously, Sean had the foresight to plan for this possibility. He assigned his power of attorney months ago. To who? Yeah, who is it? We'll get a hold of him and straighten this mess out right away. <clears throat> You're not serious. That is ridiculous. Who is it? Who is it? Felicia? Me? Sean gave me the power of attorney? That's what the paper says. And it's his signature, legally notarized. Me? You're the only one who can make the decisions now, Felicia. I don't believe it. Oh, well, well. That puts an entirely new light on things, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Well, congratulations, partner. Now that I know things are in such capable hands, I've got patience to take care of. Maybe we'd better postpone this meeting until later, huh? Oh, no, no, no. The power will come on in just a minute. Besides, I want to find out why Sean gave Felicia the power of attorney. So do I. Why would he give me that kind of power? You know, I asked him the same question. And he said that you knew the workings of the hospital ship as well as he did. And that you were one of the few people that he trusted. Completely. He trusts me after everything that's happened? Well, you have to remember that he signed the power of attorney before it all happened. Even so, I still think he trusts you. I understand. So this means that Felicia isn't... Yes, it does. Her authority over Sean's business is now as absolute as his. And until it's revoked, she has the power to buy, sell, or otherwise dispose of any of Sean's property or assets as she sees fit. You're saying that this makes Felicia Cummings the senior partner? That's right. All other partners must answer to her now. Unbelievable. Yes, I agree. Jimmy Lee, there are a few things I should go over with Felicia. Is there some place I could have a little privacy? Yeah, well... well uh, Rick, why don't you use my office? Well, thank you, Mr. Porterman. Felicia? opens up all sorts of possibilities, wouldn't you say? What possibilities? Oh, come on, Jimmy Lee. I can see the wheels turning. A young girl like Felicia in charge of all that money. Yeah, I'd certainly like to get my hands on that shipping company again. Well, it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, outsmart an innocent young girl like Felicia. With me to help you, that is. You? Yeah, why not me? <laughs> and I can help you, Jimmy Lee. Besides, there are parts of Sean Donnelly's empire which would fit very nicely into mine. Forget it, Edward. You're out of this one. What do you mean, I'm out of it? I mean, out. Excluded. This is my baby, bought and paid for with my money. Money you blackmailed out of me. So what? It's mine now. Besides, if you think I'm going back into business with you, you're crazy. Well, why not? You could do yourself a hell of a lot worse. Edward, you know something? You might be my father. But I don't like you very much. And I don't like the way you've been leaning on my best friend. What in the world are you talking about? I heard about that board meeting at the hospital the other day. You're attacking Buzz Stryker and his medical ban, and I don't like it. Oh, good Lord. One thing doesn't have anything to do with the other. I think it does. I think you're doing it just to spite me, and I won't have it. Oh, you won't? Well, let me tell you something, young fella. If you don't cut me in on that action, I'm going to tell Alan and Grant just exactly what it is you're up to. <laughs> 